Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Little Snitch and we're going to talk more specifically this time about the rules and how to set these rules up and how to actually kind of dig into the uh, profiles a little bit more. Uh, if you remember last time when we install Little Snitch we have this little menu bar that comes up here. When I hover over it it brings up my network monitor. You can see that right here. I'm just going to shut that down. But if I click on this up here, I've got the ability to uh, either show the network, monitor, those kinds of things. But I can look at the rules right here. So I'm just going to click on the rules for a minute. And it brings up this nice panel that shows me all of my little snitch configuration uh, information. Uh, it looks very familiar to any other program you've seen. I've got my kind of rules area and things like that on this side. I've got the actual rules themselves and details on them here. And then I've got inform an information bar on the side. And I can hide any of these things that I don't want uh, just by clicking these little things here. I can you know, move them around in terms of how much space I want to use, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to put that back. Uh, so what I want to do is take a look at each how these rules work and, and the different configurations. So right here I've got all the rules listed and these are ones that I've already accepted. Uh, things that I've said, hey, it's okay to have these things happen. And so if you remember uh, from the last screencast, I had accepted things like for Cobook, right? I said to allow any connection, and it shows that there. Dropbox, the same thing. And so all of my different rules and things that I set up are showing up right here. And if I were just to click on it for a second, I get details on this side. And it says, hey, for this application, allow any outgoing connection. And I'm the one who's the process owner and said that's fine. And it even gives me notes where it says, hey, on this date, Alfred tried to establish a connection with the uh, actual Alfred uh, website on port 80 and I allowed it via connection alert. And so what's great about that is I can have notes that I can put on here and I can even uh, you know uh, just kinda look all these things over. I can uh, get a lot of information right from the side panel. The other thing I can do uh, if I wanted to is I could also take a look you know kind of at these rules by right clicking actually on the rule itself. I can set a new rule for this. I could actually duplicate this rule. I could edit it, copy it, those kinds of things. If I wanted to edit the rule, let me just click that for a minute. I get this drop down window that shows up that allows me to edit it and I could say allow or deny connections or I could have it ask anytime that uh, Alfred wants to connect I can have it ask me whether I want to let it happen or not. I can uh, change the process owner from just me to the whole system so that anybody who's using the system with whatever login will have the same rules take effect. Uh, I can choose the server. I can say any server. I can do it by actual domains where I put in Alfred's domain there and say, hey, anything from that domain I'm going to allow through. I can do it by host names if I want to. I can do it by IP addresses if I want to limit it by specific IP addresses. I can say only on my local network. Uh, so it really gives me a lot of flexibility uh, to, to kind of make any changes. And I can even select the port and protocol and then choose whether to enable or disable this particular rule. So what's nice is I can set up a rule but have it disabled until I want to use it again if I want to get into that level of detail. I'm just going to cancel because I want to leave that alone. So that gives you an idea of these rules. Now on the side I've got other things that cut this down for me even more. I can see the rules I set up in the last 24 hours and that's all of these right here. Uh, I can see any temporary rules which I don't have and a temporary rule is a situation where uh, maybe I'm not around to make a decision on whether or not to let something in or not and so Alfred creates a rule based on what it knows I already do or don't do and it puts it in here for me to review later to decide if I want to keep it temporary or if I want to make it permanent. Uh, I also have unapproved rules and you can see that it allowed uh, open directory through uh, on its own. It let it uh, connect and it just wants to know do I want to approve that rule or not. And so it tells me d information on establishing that stuff for login, what port. Uh, again there's my server's name there. It's a system rule. And so I can uh, I can choose what I want to do with it, you know, putting it on or not. Uh, this little gear here always shows me that it's a when it shows me when it's a system rule. And so uh, it really just uh, is giving me information on the things that it already kind of decided in that particular case. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, uh, GUI uh, applications. And again, these are applications in my application folder that I've allowed or not allowed. And so I can always come in here and change the different preferences in here if I want to. Uh, it'll show me background processes. And these are all the system type processes. What's really great about Little Snitch is you get to see all these different system processes that are doing things, but we don't ever necessarily get to see them. And it really does help uh, when you're doing this with your server and things. Now, in these, uh, so, so that gives you that. Now, you 
you have protected rules, and these are rules that uh, you know are, are protected, kind of locked, so you don't accidentally change them and it causes problems for you. Things with the App Store and with some of the Apple stuff. Uh, you have global rules that you would set up across the board for all users of any of your computer, no matter what the login is. I don't have any of those set up. And then you have system rules, and these are some of the system programs and things uh, that you have set up. Now, a couple of things that you might want to do, especially if you're running a server, uh, you'll want to create a couple of rules uh, to make sure you can get through on VPN and you can get through on screen sharing. So you come up here and create a new rule, and you get this nice drop down. And what we're going to do is we're not worried about outgoing in this case, we're worried about incoming because this is a firewall type issue. And so as you look, it could be from any server, your local network, uh, your DNS servers, whatever it is. Um, you can leave it on any if you, if you want to. Uh, again, because you want to leave it wide open so that you can get in. Uh, if you've got a server you're connecting to remotely, uh, it's going to block you as well as everybody else. So I'm going to leave it at any server for right now. And then you can go find whatever process you want. You can drag it uh, in here or you can choose it. And since it's a system process, I'm going to uh, choose the system process part and I'm gonna go uh, you know find the information that I'm looking for and so one of them is uh, you know screen sharing uh, is one of the things that I want to make sure is uh, in there and the other one is like I said for my uh, VPN which is uh, a, a PP uh, PD file so I'm going to come down here and this one right here is the file that is used for VPN this PPPD you want to choose that we want to set up a system that allows uh, that information in uh, I can say for the process owner for the system I'm just going to even just say for the system and then click OK and what you'll see is it's going to enable that now and you notice this little arrow here this tells you whether or not it's an incoming as opposed to outgoing so all of these are outgoing rules that I've set up this is an incoming rule to come in through the firewall and that will allow me to have a VPN connection into my machine which won't uh, get in the way now it does mean that it sort of opens it up uh, for everyone else as well now if they don't know your username and password they can't get in to use it but it does sort of open that port up now, that's one of the things with with these firewalls you need to have those things open that's where your passwords and things you have to rely on and a uh, another one that you're gonna wanna add let's just add the next one too let me just click new here and we're gonna do the same kinda thing incoming and uh, we've got uh, any process there but what we wanna do is select a system process and we're going to come out here to system library we're going to go to core services you're going to scroll down in the core services all the way down to the R's uh, let's see right here we're going to go to remote management and the screen sharing D bundle is another one that can block you out if you don't uh, if you don't open that up so we're going to open that up here and the nice thing it kind of tells us where that particular thing was from and I'm going to change this to system as well just to, just to make sure it's across the system and say okay and so now that's been added and you can see it's a system service and it's going to allow those incoming connections and that'll open up those two things that would keep you normally from maybe being locked out of your server if you wanted to use VPN or screen sharing so I recommend you add those on there uh, you can see too if I wanted to just look at the incoming connections there you go and these are all firewall type uh, connections these are all all of these things are related to the actual firewall on what it's going to allow in and not allow in so if it's not listed there it's going to ask you about it uh, or it's going to block it until you approve it or uh, disapprove it okay so that gives you kind of a tour of these side things now you also have uh, suggestions down here and so like I said it's giving a, a suggestion for open directory that it feels like hey I should allow all connections for uh, this particular uh, IP address which happens to be my server's IP address so I'm actually gonna say yeah let's let's allow that and so now it the suggestions disappeared and now it becomes a part of my all rules and it's a permanent thing and you notice that the temporary rule is gone as well because I've actually um, you know accepted it I could have made it permanent here on this screen as well but I wanted to show you all the different things that showed uh, on here well that's all I have for this week I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac